Thank you very much. I, I want to make a couple of comments before I ask a couple of questions. Uh, first, you know, this is one of those hearings that we won't see extensive coverage on CNN or the nightly news, but we appreciate you being here. One of the reasons is that, that you won't see it is that uh, it's a bipartisan bill trying to solve problems for Americans where nobody is shouting at anybody or making any accusations against the folks who are here and both sides of the aisle are generally in agreement. Uh, Mr. Long, you and Ms. Matsui have come up with a good idea and I commend you for that. Uh, Mr. Probst, I like uh, the, the way you look at this. This bill, of course, deals with HHS that we're talking about today, but there's been a lot of discussion about what hospitals should be doing. And one of my con early concerns before you made your comments was, okay, wait a minute, one size fits all from Washington doesn't usually work. You made that point very well in a larger system like your own, uh, talking about separating the CIO and the CISO. Uh, you all have made a great case for that today. But in the 20 bed hospital where the uh, folks are also, the CIO is also changing the, uh, I think you said the, the photocopy or toner or, or something along those lines, it doesn't necessarily make sense, although we have to be vigilant. Also in your testimony, Mr. Probst, I noticed that you touched on uh, device manufacturers related to HIPAA, and because there will be some folks, probably insomniacs, uh, who will watch this, uh, could you explain that dilemma? Because I'm very concerned about HIPAA issues, and I thought it was a very uh, salient point that you made. Well, I mean, HIPAA gives us good guidelines on the privacy and the security that we should apply to all of our information. The specific issues around medical devices are, um, they don't have the same level of sophistication around cybersecurity, at least historically they haven't. And we have a lot of old his of medical devices. I think they're getting much more aware of it today. But today we have thousands of medical devices. They're all connected to our networks. They're essentially computers. They have personal health information on them, most of them. And, uh, and they become a pretty interesting entry point for the, the bad actors to get into our networks. And it doesn't take much of a, a crack in the, in the hull for the water to start pouring in. So that, that would be my major concern with medical devices is just how we've been able to treat them. And because they're, they're regulated by the FDA, most of them, I, I assume all of them, I don't know, but because they're regulated, um, many of their operating systems are you know, decades old. So we don't have all the patches that Mr. McMillan talked about that we can apply to it to get the security to the level that we want. So medical devices, I think, are something we're, well, we are paying attention to as an industry, but we're going to have to pay a lot more attention to. And when you talk about they're regulated by the FDA and therefore some of them have operating systems that are decades old, that's because if there's any change, it has to go back through the exactly process right. to be reapproved by the FDA. So what you're suggesting is, is that maybe in the same bipartisan spirit that this bill was put together, some of us might want to be looking at a way that we could change, at least for the security side, say that if you do a patch on security issues, it does not have to go through that FDA process. Is that a, I, I know you haven't had time to think about it. Maybe you want to answer that question later. Yeah, maybe, maybe but that's a reasonable sentence. conclusion, is it not? Maybe put it that way. Would that be a reasonable conclusion for someone like myself to make? I think that's a reasonable conclusion that it should be looked at. I don't know the exact answer for sure. the FDA, but it definitely needs to be looked at. And I appreciate that. And that's why I, I love coming to these hearings and, mm -hmm. and listening, because there's often things that you learn that you never thought you would. And that uh, sounds like a, a good suggestion. I do appreciate it very much, all of you being here. You've You've uh, really uh, opened a lot of our eyes uh, and uh, convinced me this is, A, a good bill, and that, that in fairness, uh, every health care provider in the nation ought to be reexamining what they're doing and see what fits for them to try to give us uh, some more security in these areas. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back, and I believe Mr. Corman wanted to add something to that. Um, on, on that point, um, the I Am The Cavalry group, I founded of volunteers, we're specifically focused on um, cyber safety for connected medical devices, and many of them are very hackable. There was a recent DHS ICS CERT announcement on a single device that had over 1,400 known vulnerabilities in it. Uh, but to clarify, um, we've been working with the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, on their guidance for connected uh, cyber safety in medical devices. Their pre-market guidance has clarified that you can, in fact, patch without going through recertification. There's been poor education and awareness that that has been clarified, and some vendors claim that it can't patch, even though it's been clarified repeatedly that they can. 
And number two, this January, the post-market guidance for ongoing care feeding and hygiene for those devices has also been published, and the 90-day comment period is closed. So the FDA is taking uh, actions to modernize the very things you're concerned about. I think there's a long way to go, but they're, they're on the right journey. Thank you. Yield back again. Thank you. And at this time, I'll